This tutorial is brought to you by PixelAILabs.com, your path to AI influencer success. Everyone's sleeping on WAN 2.2, and I'm about to show you why that's a huge mistake. Sure, it's being called the best open source video model right now, but what if I told you it has a hidden superpower that nobody's talking about? This thing absolutely destroys Flux and Hydream at image generation. I'm not exaggerating. The images coming out of WAN 2.2 are insane, and the way it handles consistent characters will blow your mind. I've been testing this for weeks, and what I discovered changes everything. By the end of this video, you'll be generating images that look like this, and this, and even this. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Let's dive in. Great! Now we can start by loading the WAN image generator GGUF workflow. If you've been using our comfy UI installer from the course, you'll already have all the custom nodes installed, which saves us some time. The only thing you need to do is update comfy UI to the latest version. You'll find the update button right in the manager menu. It's really straightforward. Just remember to restart comfy UI after updating and you're good to go. As always, let's take a moment to understand what's happening in our workflow. First, we have the models group. Now, WAN 2.214 billion is quite different from other diffusion models you might have worked with. Instead of loading just one UNET model, you actually need to load two, a high noise model and a low noise model. This is where things get interesting. WAN 2.2 introduces something called Mixture of Experts Architecture, or MOE for short, into the Video Generation Diffusion Model. This MOE approach has been widely validated in large language models as an efficient way to increase total model parameters while keeping inference costs nearly unchanged. The A14B model series uses a clever two-expert design that's specifically tailored to the denoising process of diffusion models. The high-noise expert handles the early stages, focusing on getting the overall layout right, while the low-noise expert comes in during the later stages to refine all those fine video details. Each expert model contains about 14 billion parameters, giving us a total of 27 billion parameters. But here's the clever part, only 14 billion are are active at any given step, which means inference computation and GPU memory usage remain nearly unchanged. If you're curious to dive deeper into the architecture, I've linked the official Hugging Face model page in the description below. So in practice, we load the high noise T2V model first, then the low noise model in another UNET loader. The clip and VAE components remain the same as what we saw with WAN 2.1 in our previous lessons, so that should feel familiar. The high noise model connects to our high noise power LoRa. As you can see, we also have the clip connected to the LoRa, which allows us to use trigger words. However, I found this works best when applied to the high noise LoRa only. We're loading the new Instagirl version, 2 High Noise, specifically designed for WAN 2.2. Below that, we have the low noise LoRa's. First, we're connecting the WAN 2.1 Light X to V LoRa. This is what enables us to generate high quality images with just 8 to 10 steps, which is pretty impressive. Vid LoRa V2 that we used in our WAN 2.1 lessons, which still works really well. You can actually generate images with WAN 2.2 using only 8 steps with that one. Additionally, there's another lightning fast LoRa for WAN 2.2 that I've linked in the description. This one can generate images with just four steps, which is incredibly fast. For this tutorial though, we'll focus on the Light X 2V LoRa since it gives the best overall results. Just remember that the LoRa strength needs to be slightly lower than the style LoRa. A value of 0.6 works pretty well, but feel free to experiment with different values until you get output images you're satisfied with. The second LoRa in the Low Noise group is our Instagirl V2 Low Noise LoRa, which we'll set to a strength of 1. Now let's move over to the Prompts group. I've concatenated three text nodes here for better organization. 
The first one is where you'll put your trigger word. In our case, the trigger word for this Laura is Instagirl. If you're loading a different Laura or your personally trained one, make sure to put the specific trigger word you used during training in this field. The second text node is for your positive prompt. Both descriptive sentences and tags work well with WAN 2.2. I've copied one of the Instagirl example prompts here to get us started. The third text node contains keywords like amateur cell phone quality and similar terms to generate output images that look like they were captured with a smartphone. This really boosts the realism factor. Feel free to experiment with other keywords like low quality or JPEG artifacts to see how they affect your results. The last text node is for the negative prompt. And yes, WAN video models fully support both positive and negative prompts. Unlike Flux models, this is really useful for eliminating unwanted styles or fixing bad anatomy issues. For now, I'm using the default negative prompt that comes with the WAN 2.2 workflow. Moving on to the image processing group, this is where things differ from Flux, SDXL, or even the previous WAN 2.1 model. Since we're working with two models, high noise and low noise, we need 2K samplers to split the generation job between them. The empty latent node allows us to set the width and height of our output image. WAN 2.2 is incredibly flexible here. You can go all the way up to 2K resolution. I've found that 1536 by 1536 produces high quality square images without many character anatomy issues. However, keep in mind that 2K resolutions require more VRAM, so if you're working with 12 gigs, I'd recommend sticking to 1088 by 1088. For mobile image formats, 704 by 1280 works amazingly well. We'll explore different aspect ratios in the upcoming examples. Also, by setting the length to 1, the WAN 2.2 model generates only the first frame, which is how we're generating still images instead of videos. Below that, there's a seed node where we can set the seed number for both case samplers. You can set it to fixed, random, or increment depending on your needs. For the high noise case sampler, we're going to generate the image in 10 total steps, but here's how we split it. The first case sampler ends at step 5, and the low noise case sampler picks up from step 5 and continues to step 10. So we have 10 steps total, 5 generated by the high noise model and 5 by the low noise model. Regarding the sampler selection, you can use UniPC or Euler, but I've discovered that these new samplers from a custom node called Res4Life give you superior quality and amazing prompt adherence. To get these, just open the manager, search for Res4Life, and install it. After restarting Comfy UI, you'll see these new samplers available. The best combination I've found for quality and speed is Res 2S and Beta 5.7. Of course, feel free to experiment with other samplers and share your results with other members in our Discord channel. That covers the workflow setup. Now you should have a clear understanding of how this workflow operates and how we're generating images instead of videos using the WAN 2.2 model. Let's run the workflow now. The first time loading the models can take up to two minutes, but generation will be much faster after that initial load. The GGUF models are slower than FP8 models. In my case, it takes about 44 seconds to generate a 1532 by 1532 image with 10 steps. And there's our first image. I'll let you judge the quality for yourself. I don't want to influence your opinion or show bias toward WAN 2.2. Let me change the dimensions to 704 by 1280 to create a portrait format image.
As you can see, the image has incredibly realistic aspects, from the lighting to the skin texture. The character anatomy and facial details are amazing, and overall the image quality is excellent. I'm really happy with this technique, and it shows great promise. Now I'll change the prompt to request a close-up image. Look at this, it's ultra-realistic. The prompt adherence is absolutely top-notch. In our positive prompt, we asked for an earbud in one ear only and for her to be putting her fingers to her lips. Everything came out exactly as we described, which is really impressive. If you're excited about creating a consistent AI influencer and mastering techniques like achieving character consistency in WAN 2.2 or training Alora in minutes, you're just scratching the surface with this tutorial. For the complete experience, head over to pixelailabs.com and enroll in my Photoreal Influencer Blueprint course. You'll gain access to the full version of this lesson, plus 22 additional in-depth lessons, all fully updated for 2025. With automatic comfy UI installers and a models downloader included, you'll have everything you need to create stunning AI influencers with ease. Don't miss out. Visit pixelailabs.com today and start building your dream AI influencer.